Okay, let's see what week 15 brings us. Sleeping in. Makes the feel, make you feel like the day has hope. Okay, it's starting to get really nice outside. The weather's been nice and warm lately. This is pretty much the perfect finals week. With spring break only a week away, I'm having a hard time concentrating on my schoolwork. Spring break? Sweet. I clap my hands on my cheeks to try to keep my head together. I still have all my finals to take. I can't afford to be distracted now. I've got a book in my lap, but my attention keeps wandering, and I keep staring out at the quad around me. Oh. That's how I noticed Professor Task walking by me, which got me thinking about his extra credit assignment. I wonder if Roxanne has already gone to see him. I begin wondering if I should go see him. The professor is almost through the quad. I can still catch him if I want, but I'm not sure I want to. Maybe he can tell us if she went to him? <laughs> I don't want to fail. I get to my feet and quickly run after the professor. Professor! Oh, Anne, wasn't it? Yes, uh, what do you want? If you've come to betray your partner, you'll actually need to verbally request the answer to the finals. Otherwise, I do have things to do, so make it snappy, please. Well, has Roxanne betrayed me? Of course. Came to me on day one. What? I can't believe I'm hearing this. I never thought Roxanne would betray me so quickly. I can't believe this. On day one? What was all that studying and work for, then? This is ridiculous. Of course, you realize that, as the warden in this scenario, it's in my best interest to tell you that the other betrayed you, right? The more of you who request answers means the fewer tests I have to grade. Honestly, if the college didn't require at least some academic standards, I'd just pass the whole lot of you and have done with it. <laughs> so... Roxanne hasn't betrayed me. How should I know? I've got all the information on you students written down. Do you honestly think I can be bothered to remember all of your names? Though I'm pretty sure your partner came to me. Maybe it was day two. Who can remember all the betrayals? I'm sure once I check my files, it will check out. So what will it be for you, Anne? I am going to let it go. Even if she did betray me, I had the moral high ground. My grades are super high anyway. I don't care about your stupid extra credit assignment. I don't know if Roxanne really betrayed me or not, but I'm not going to be the low life in this scenario. No, I think I'll just take the test normally, Professor. <sighs> Professor Task shakes his head. Oh, fine. Just give me more work to do. I suppose you think I've got nothing better to do than read your answers on a test, then, hmm? Oh, whatever. I suppose you've got your ethics to stand behind. Well, I hope your partner didn't betray you, or you'll be in for quite the shock, and possibly my class again next quarter. The professor claps a hand on my shoulder as he looks me in the eye. <laughs> well, either way. You've played the game well, and for that you have my thanks. This will be a fascinating chapter of the book I write someday. <laughs> okay. He gives me a thumbs up and then walks briskly away into the nearby building. You're the weirdest professor ever. As I turn to go, out of the corner of my eye, I catch a back that looks suspiciously like it belongs to Roxanne. Uh-oh. Hope she doesn't think I was betraying her. I really hope they don't think I was meeting to the prof- I I was meeting to the professor to betray them? Man, that sentence is just a disaster. Well, nothing for it now. I'll just have to see how it turns out on Friday. I return to my previous seat and open my book back up. My nap. Wait, you want me to do what? Oh, hello. <laughs> Please, Anne. Sally was all worked up about this thing today, and I'm worried the scene might get ugly. I'm already stuck here fielding calls from the housing authority about student involvement. Apparently, Sally went down to the science building earlier to join a bunch of other students in protesting. What exactly are they protesting? I don't know. I'm paid to keep you people from burning the house down, not to watch your every movement. <laughs> Sorry, Anne, it's been a rough week. Can you please go check up on her for me? 
I'm supposed to have a meeting with my advisor this afternoon. But since you asked, Dominic... Come on, I'll pull some strings and make sure your advisor sees you tomorrow. Well, okay, if you're sure you can get it rearranged? Definitely. Thank you, Anne, I owe you. Yes, you do. <laughs> I head out the door and over to the science building. When I get there, there's a crowd of maybe 30 people all holding signs and murmuring. The crowd doesn't seem ugly, but they do seem quite disgruntled. I can see a few campus security officers overlooking the crowd. I wonder where Sally is in all this. Oh, there. There she is. Are we going to stand for this? Right on cue. Sally's standing on a box of some kind at the front of the crowd, speaking into a microphone. When I found out they were doing testing on animals here at our school, I set out the call for action. I'm really happy that you all answered that call, but now we need to send up a different call. A call to stop the atrocities happening right inside this building. The crowd cheers for her, hefting their signs high. I can see the security guards getting restless. A few of them are reaching towards their belts. Of course, the school doesn't allow weapons, so they don't have anything on their belts. Still, it's worrying. I make my way to the front of the crowd and wave to Sally. And that's why we cannot stop our clarion call until these monsters have given up all the tests they're doing on animals in there. Are you with me? The crowd cheers again while I try to get Sally's attention. That's what I thought. And if those cowards don't get out here soon, then we're going to bust in there and free those animals ourselves. This is just wrong. The crowd cheers again, even louder this time. Security guards are definitely getting nervous. I frantically wave Sally over. She finally gets off of her box. Oh, Anne! Hey, I'm so happy you came! Um, I... I actually came because Dominic asked me to check on you. I didn't even know this was happening. I just... well... I'm here anyway. Oh! Well, I'm still happy you came. How did all this start? Right! You won't believe it! I was on our campus message board when I read a post that stated they were due to begin their testing with animals today. A message board post, really? Yeah, the guy must have been a scientist because he said it was going to be really hard to deal with. He said he was expecting a lot of suffering. They're testing on suffering animals? I can't stand for that, Anne. Sally, look, the internet is full of liars. I remember when some post had me convinced that malaria was carried exclusively by six-year-olds. Are you sure this was true? Well, answer me this. If nothing is happening in there, how can they refuse to let us in and see, huh? Maybe because there are 30 angry people out here? <laughs> yeah, 30 people angry about all the lies! Look, are you with me or against me here? I've already had to tell those stupid rent -a cops that we're perfectly in our rights. Don't you start on me too. I don't know, that just doesn't seem right. Like, why would a school publicly announce, oh, we're gonna do testing on suffering animals? I'll be right back. Don't do anything rash. Look, Sally, I'm not against you, but this all seems really weird and hasty. Let me look into this a little more. Maybe I can get you some more specific information so you can properly accuse them, okay? Just promise not to charge it until I get back, all right? All right, fine. Just hurry. I can't stand to think of those animals in trouble. I run home with all of my might. I don't know. I know if I don't hurry, someone's going to do something stupid. As soon as I get in the door, I hurry up to my room. I know I haven't got much time, so I start searching through the college's message boards with a fervor. Let's see. Here we go. Found the original message. Starting testing on animals today. I hate it. So much suffering, but it's all in the name of science. We've got the grant, better make use of it. What grant is this? I fished through various campus news articles, tracing links and keywords back until I find the source of the grant and what the research is for. When I do, I slap my palm to my face so hard it actually hurts. What? I print the article and rush back out the door. I really can't believe this is happening. I'm sure once Sally understands, she'll feel the same way. What is it? Back at the protest, I can see I'm just in time. Up in front of the door to the science building, I can see Sally bullying a short guy with glasses who seems to be from the science building. 
He seems familiar, but I can't place him right now. It's probably Butch. <laughs> yep, it's Butch. This is your last chance, Butch. Come clean about your hideous experiments. I'm telling you, there are no hideous experiments in here. Everything in here is perfectly safe and approved. Oh, like I'm going to believe you when there's suffering going on. Actually, Sally? Oh, Anne, come on, let's force this little weasel to open up. Before she can say another word, I shove the article into her hands. She looks at me inquisitively, but starts reading it. Butch leans over the paper and nods in understanding. He's wearing the same outfit I am, too, I just realized. Oh, yeah, that would pretty much explain what's going on in there. You can, uh, you can see why we don't want to discuss it. Sally turns red as a beet, then turns to the audience with her megaphone up. False alarm, people! Go home! Nothing to see here! Scram! She then drops the microphone and walks off, whispering a quiet, Thanks! to me as she passes me. <laughs> what are they doing? I hope she gets over this. Her heart was in the right place, but... Oh well. Butch scratches his head, equally embarrassed, and just wan wanders back into the building. For my part, I hurry after Sally. Maybe I'll treat her to lunch. And yeah, can you tell me what that was all about, please? I don't understand. I'm confused. Napping. Another event. I've got finals all week, and yet I still feel like I have a ton more studying to do. Everyone in Latin House is hard at work, trying to get their last study sessions in. Isabel has been locked up in her room since dawn. Sally's barely been outside to walk her dog. Even Rakesh is... <laughs> As I look into Rakesh's room, I'm actually not sure what Rakesh is doing. He appears to be doing a kind of headstand on his books. Um, Rakesh? I think you get less money from the student bookstore if you ruin the book. Unfortunately, I think I startled Rakesh as he crashes to the ground. I briefly consider running before he recognizes me. Um, I'll play it, I guess. Um, are, are you okay, Rakesh? I didn't mean to startle you. I am fine, thank you, Anne. I was... I was trying to... study. Were you trying to learn by osmosis, Rakesh? Certainly not. I'm not a buffoon. You, um, you know osmosis doesn't actually work like that, right? But what about if, um... Rakesh, unless you became an amoeba since the last time we spoke, I don't think osmosis is going to help you out much. Did you really think it would work? <sighs> not really, no. Well then, I guess we'll have to figure out a different way for you to learn the material. I suppose I really must rely on other methods to learn. Well, what do you have in mind, Anne? Well, what's the subject? It is... it is for biology. I... I need to pass a class so that my grades reflect that I am doing well on my proper curriculum. It's important to my parents that I try my best to become a rich American-trained doctor. <laughs> oh dear. Well, if it's important to you, let's do it. We'll study so hard, you'll be spouting biology lessons in your sleep. We can do it, Rakesh. Yes, we can best this test together. Rakesh and I gather up all of his notes that he's taken during class this quarter. Unfortunately, given his terrible attendance record, his notes really aren't much. Of course, it doesn't help that half his book is covered in doodles and drawings and just blotches of color. Oh my goodness. We spend a few hours comparing his notes to the text to his textbooks and mostly just studying the things that his class has been going over the past quarter. After a while, Rakesh's attention begins to drift. He just can't concentrate on the subject for that long. I get his attention back a few times, but he's beginning to lose it. I know he's trying really hard to keep his parents happy, I just want to help him out. It's clear Rakesh is losing interest, though. I need to do something to clear his head so he'll study more. Let's do an art activity? That's just going to distract him. Let's take a break. Okay, Rakesh, it's clear you need to get your head clear so you can concentrate. Yes, this is a most excellent idea, Anne. I will make us some food to take our minds off of our predicament. That sounds good. A few minutes later, Rakesh and I are in the kitchen, 
Rakesh is mixing up some kind of batter while I'm digging through our cupboards to see if we've got any fruit. Cake is very good for the brain. I'm sure I heard that in one of the days I attended class. If we can make a good one, surely I will be able to study all night long. What are you two doing? Um, well, we took a little break and Rakesh thought a sweet snack might help out. And study cake? Studying cake? That's the best idea I've heard all night. Did you use the egg substitute I brought? Oh, yes. Before I know it, the whole house is helping and arguing over ingredients to go into our study cake. I guess everyone really just needed a break from studying for finals. I'm glad we did this. I feel a little bad that Rakesh probably won't get any studying done tonight, but at least he's relieving his stress. A few hours and a messy kitchen later, we have a rather magnificent and terribly delicious cake on our hands. Oh, and here it is. Professor Task's final is grueling. I swear he's never even hinted at half of these concepts before. I try to peek at my study partner to see if they're breezing through this, but Roxanne's head is bent down just like everyone else. There's nothing else for it. I'm just going to have to finish this test out and find out what happens. I can't skip the test. <sighs> Once my test is complete, I walk down to the professor's desk. I try to sneak a peek at Roxanne to see if they're having an easy time or not, but it's impossible to tell. Ah, finished, Anne. Hang around a few moments, we'll discuss the results of our little extra credit assignment experiment. <laughs> I'm actually really nervous. I nod with a bit of apprehension. I'm not really sure I want to know what happened, but I suppose it's all part of the experiment. I return to my desk and busy myself for the remainder of the test time, watching as everyone else slowly hands in their tests. Finally, the only ones left in the room are myself and the others in the extra credit group. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Time to find out which of you will be failing, and which will be getting C's. Roxanne looks over at me, raising an eyebrow. I shrug and just look back at the professor. Okay, let's start running through this stuff, shall we? Let's see, Marvin. You fail. Looks like Tara came to me pretty quickly. Oh. What am I going to do for you? I don't even know who you are. What? This is crap! Suck it up, sunshine. You knew the rules. I watch Marvin run out of the class looking like he's sp he spit nails. Okay, who else have we got? Okay, Max. Let's see. Oh, good. Both you and Jared gave me some easy tests to grade. You both get C's. Congratulations. Good thing I didn't work with Max. Finally, Professor Tasks looks at me. Looks like you kept the faith, Roxanne. Ah, such loyalty brings a tear to me jaded and uncaring heart. Wait, no, that's heartburn. <laughs> anyway, you both took things normally, so I guess I'll actually have to grade your tests. I'll get back to you on your grades, but I assume they'll be fine. Alright. I knew that you would make an appropriate partner for me, Anne. We have bested this challenge. Well, I'm glad it all worked out. I'm so glad we partnered up for this. We worked well together. I smile at Roxanne, who actually smiles back for a change. I'm just happy it all worked. I think that's a lot of you here. We'll deal with any other stragglers later. I slump down in my desk, mostly just glad that the tension is over when Professor Task's cell phone suddenly breaks the silence. Yes. Well, yes, I put them in a... Yes, a prisoner's dilemma. Well, I'm a sociology professor, of course it's relevant. Well, how was I supposed to know his father was a donor? What's going on? Professor Task is frowning something fierce. Someone's clearly reading him the riot act. What? Hell no, I've got tenure. He can go to hell. The grades are staying. I didn't get where I am grading papers, and I'm not about to start. Fine, yes, I can make it up to the students somehow. How about... But that's my... I was going to... Oh, fine. Professor Task looks fit to be tied as he puts his cell phone away. So, apparently Marvin is a little crybaby and went whining to the dean. <laughs> oh. Thirty minutes later, Roxanne and I are standing in front of the stunned members of Latin House. 
face. Seriously? Yeah, apparently the Dean tore into him something fierce. So to make up for putting us all through that, we all get to use Professor Task's beach house the spring break. Sweet. We have to pay our own way, and it's only the space we're getting. No amenities. But it's on a private beach, so we'll have this place to ourselves. Oh man, this is going to be so sweet. I'm going to get packing. I hope I have a good swimsuit. Can I bring Vegemite? I don't think so. Sorry. It's okay. I'll get my friend Jovia to watch him. Woo! Spring break! I watch everyone gather excitedly and go off to start packing. Hopefully this will help us forget the ugliness that just happened and we can all have a great time. Really? I thought it would just be for the students who were involved in the dilemma. Okay. Sure, why not? I should do more organized stuff. Spring break. Well, we won't be doing any organized stuff next week. It's because it's going to be spring break. Woohoo!